Let's talk about retirement. So are you making full use of your savings? Think of the times you yearn for better returns. After real inflation charges and taxes, are you even making a profit? With food, clothing, rent all more than doubling over the last 10 years, you need to do something different. Gambling on Robinhood or stocks might lose you the lot. And like thousands of others, you want to retire stress-free. A precious metals IRA with Noble Gold could be the answer. And this month, Noble Gold is gifting a genuine rare Carson City minted Morgan silver dollar with every qualifying IRA or 401k. These coins were around when an ounce of silver was worth a dollar. In 1893, for example, in mint condition, it is now worth more than 3250 a staggering increase of 325,000%. That's a return of over 2,500% a year. This is the power of long-term precious metals investing. So get in touch with the experts at Noble Gold and talk through your options today. That's noblegoldinvestments.com or call 877-646-5347. That is 877-646-5347. Let's talk about our health. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half the collagen it did in youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up to 70 to 80% of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen. Supplementing collagen will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. But the right type of collagen is difficult, if not downright impossible, to get in the typical diet or supplement. You risk ingesting dangerous ingredients or wasting money on a diet that doesn't truly combat aging. That's why I highly recommend Health with X22. Aegis Multicollagen is a powerhouse of the right ingredients to improve your youthful appearance quickly and effectively. Get Multicollagen for 51% off today by going to healthwithx22.com. That is healthwithx22.com and you'll get a 60-day money-back guarantee and there is free shipping with every order. Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 2417, and today's date is March 2nd, 2021, and the title of the episode is Future Proves Past. It has begun. Is Ray a sleeper? Future marker. Let's get right into the economic collapse news. Now, what's very interesting is that when Trump was in his presidency, he decided to read the stimulus bill. He created a video, and he let everyone know that this is what the corrupt politicians are about to do. Yes, we're in this pandemic. Yes, people are suffering. Yes, people are losing their jobs and businesses. Why? Because the deep state, the central bank, pushed this on everyone through made-up statistics. So Trump, during his presidency, when he received the stimulus bill, he started to read it off to the public, letting everyone know that the corrupt politicians they really didn't care about the people. Instead, they were sending millions, billions overseas to many different areas that had nothing to do with the pandemic. The people were receiving a small portion of this. People started to recognize that these corrupt politicians, they weren't working in the benefit of the people. Since then, we see the House now has pushed a $1.9 trillion stimulus bill and the people, they're looking at this going, why is only 9% actually going to we, the people? Where is all this other money going? And why do we need to do this at this moment, during a dark winter, during a pandemic, as they call it? Shouldn't this just be going to the people? Shouldn't it just be, listen, we're here to help you. We're here to get your business up and running. We're here to get you back to work. We're here to help you pay your electric bill. We're here to help you just get through this. But instead, they're dropping, what, $1,400 or so for the people and the millions and the billions. They're going elsewhere. And people are starting to realize this. People are starting to notice this. Remember, this is a stimulus bill for the pandemic. Does it look like a stimulus bill for the pandemic? No. And we can see there's a lot of other things within this bill. Actually, Tom Cotton, he lays it out and lets everyone know where this money is going. And yes, a lot of it, I would say the majority of it, is not going to the people. This is what he tweeted out. The Democrats' $1.9 trillion spending bill is a pork-laden goodie bag masquerading as COVID relief. The American people should know the ingredients of this snake oil. Here are a few relief measures the Democrats want us to pay for. Nancy Pelosi, she earmarked a hundred plus million to expand San Francisco's subway. Well, you know what's going to happen. Remember that train that they were building in California, the, the speed train? 
But whatever happened to that? A lot of money was spent on that. We have $1.5 million for Chuck Schumer's Seaway International Bridge in New York. Well, you know where that money's going. You know it's going not going to the bridge. You know that's going to be siphoned off and it's going to be spread out amongst the elite. We have $129 billion for elementary and secondary schools, even if they stay closed. Well, if they're closed, why do they need the money? What does all this have to do with the pandemic anyway? It has nothing to do with the pandemic. Let me just continue here. An artist relief fund, $135 million for the National Endowment for the Arts, $135 million for the National Endowment for the Humanities, and $200 million for the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Well, this is these places were all closed. Do we really need to support this right now? Or is this where they launder money? We know the answer to that. $350 billion for a blue state bailout to cover the damages done by blue state governors keeping their states locked down. Now, was there any science in keeping the states locked down? No. Why did they do it? Political purposes. Should the people be paying for this? No, maybe it should come out of the salaries of these individuals that shut the states down and those individuals that told them to shut the states down and keep them shut down, no matter how many people they hurt, how many people lost their jobs, how many people lost their businesses. It doesn't matter. Remember, this is political. All this money should not be going to these individuals. This is what we call a payoff. A payoff. Thank you for keeping the state shut down. Now, here's your payoff. We also have a taxpayer-funded abortion. Well, why would we need that during a pandemic? We wouldn't. And we also have $1 billion for racial justice in farming, where they're going to be spending a billion dollars, and they're going to be sending this money to black farmers. We also have $50 million for environmental justice grants from the EPA, a gift to left-wing political groups. Again, where is this really going? We kind of know. And instead of opening up schools, Democrats in Congress are giving federal workers up to 21000 each to stay home and not do their jobs. Well, they don't do anything anyhow. They're politicians. They're workers that aren't doing that much. And why should they get money for staying home compared to the rest of the country where they have to go back to work to earn their money? All of this has nothing to do with the pandemic. All of this has to do with paying off the elite, laundering money, and pushing their agenda. People are starting to see this now. People are starting to understand this now. And people are saying no. Actually, Elizabeth Warren, she is proposing a rich tax. Now, we've heard this before with the private West Central Bank. Back when that was created back in 1913, when they said, listen, and I don't mean it happened exactly in 1913. It happened a couple years later where they said, you know something, we're going to start taxing the rich. Don't worry. We're not going to do the middle class or the poor. You have nothing to worry about. Well, here we have Elizabeth Warren doing the same exact thing. She is proposing a rich tax called the Ultra Millionaire Tax Act. Now, the bill, she, which she's introducing into the Senate, calls for the households with a net worth of more than $50 million to pay 2% of their wealth every year as a new tax. On top of that, a 1% surtax will be added for those with a net worth in excess of $1 billion. The bedrock of a growing economy is wealth held in the form of investments, which is how most very wealthy people hold the majority of their wealth. The Warren Bill would shrink the wealth of the most wealthy to the tune of 2-3% to per year. She would take that money and redirect it away from capital investments and into government spending. Where do you think this money's going? So she's going to rob from the rich and give it to the government. The government then is going to launder that money into special programs, which means those individuals that are investing to help businesses to make the country grow, to create jobs, well, they're penalized for that. Do you think this will help the economy, or do you think it will start to destroy the economy? Well, it's going to destroy the economy. Actually, there is an analysis by Bloomberg News that the tax would result in 100 richest Americans paying over $78 billion in taxes annually which would then start to erode the economy. And if these individuals decide to leave the country, let's say like Trump, it would be a 40% exit tax. Is this really going to help? Now, let's just think about Trump for a sec. He's a very wealthy man. He's a billionaire, right? And how many people does he employ? Every time he creates a building, every time 
He opens up a hotel. He, he builds a, an apartment building. He creates a new project. Jobs are created. Now, what happens if, you have to, if he has to give 2 to 3% each year to the government in addition to his taxes that he's already paying now? He was going to use that money for projects to pay people, and now he's going to have to cut back a little bit. Maybe he won't do as many projects. And this is what's going to happen throughout the country. Remember, their entire agenda is not to help the people. It's to hurt the people. Yes, it sounds great on paper. It sounds great. Yes, let's let's tax the rich. Let's tax them. But you have to remember, these are the individuals that own industries, that employ a lot of people, that want to expand their businesses, even small business owners. Some of these individuals, they're making millions of dollars a year. And they would like to expand their business. But again, if you put an extra expense on a business, what happens? So now they have a $15 minimum wage they want to do. They have this extra tax and the income that's coming in, it is not keeping up. Look at your own household. Can you imagine right now, if you're making $50,000 a year, you're paying your taxes and they said, okay, here's an additional expense, which you have to pay plus two to 3% of your income. What would you do? This is what they're trying to do here in the United States. But the people are seeing through this. Actually, Trump and the Patriots, they want people to see this. Think about what Trump did when he was in office. And this was done on purpose. He reversed everything. He cut taxes, cut regulation. The oil price, the gas price at the pump went down. People had more money in their pocket. This was done on purpose. What you were experiencing was a new economy, what it would be like if we got rid of taxes, if we got rid of regulations, if we got rid of the private Western Central Bank. Now, since you experience that, and people have experienced getting jobs, having their small businesses expand, people don't want to go back to what they had before. Why would you? And with these individuals pushing these agendas, that's what's going to happen. And people understand this now. Because once you get a taste of what it's like to pay less taxes, to get a job, and your hourly wage automatically goes up because businesses have more money, they can expand. People don't want to go back to what the deep state, what the central bank is offering. Trump was counting on this. The patriots were counting on this. And people are seeing this. But we need to remember, we are in the middle of a transition. We're transitioning away from the private West central bank. This whole entire pandemic was created, yes, for many different agendas, but the main agenda was for the Great Reset. Why? Because Trump robbed them of the Great War. They wanted a Great War because this would be very, very easy to usher in the Great Reset. Since they don't have the Great War, they had to rely on the pandemic. Now the pandemic's going away, which we'll be talking about in the next report. Now they're struggling. They're trying to figure out what to do. And at the same time, we see cryptocurrencies. They're continually rising. Yes, they drop down a little bit. Yes, the central bank will battle any other form of currency. Doesn't matter if it's crypto, doesn't matter if it's gold, silver, you name it. They won't allow it, at least that's what they think. But the people will decide. The people will decide what they want to happen. And the people are making that decision. And as time goes on, more and more people will make that decision. And soon, the central bank, they'll have no say. Because once the people around the world speak up and they decide on which direction they want to go with their lives, with the economy, with everything, they're doomed and they know this. This is why Trump and the Patriots, in the four years that he was in his presidency, this is why he reversed most of the globalist structure. This is why he reversed the central bank structure. He wanted to give the people a taste of all of this. He wanted to show the people what it would be like to live in an economy that works. And this economy that he showed us was within the boundaries of the private Western Central Bank illusion. Once he strips away these boundaries and makes it a people economy, the economy is going to take off like we've never seen before. He knows it. The people that are working with him know it. 
and the private Western Central Bank knows it. He gave us a small taste. People liked it. People said, this is fantastic. We want more of it. And he's going to give the people exactly what they want. Let's talk about our health. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half the collagen it did in youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up to 70 to 80% of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen. That's why I highly recommend Health with X22. Ageless Multi-Collagen is a powerhouse of the right ingredients to improve your youthful appearance quickly and effectively. Get Multi-Collagen for 51% off today by going to healthwithx22.com. That is healthwithx22.com. Now, it seems that everything is about to change. Everything that we read through the Q post and everything that we researched during Trump's presidency, it seems that a lot of it is coming true right now. It seems that the future does prove the past, and we're seeing a lot of things happen right now. I do believe everything is about to change. And the way you need to think about this is that Trump, with his experience, he understands how to maneuver through criminals, through criminal organizations. Remember, he helped Rudy Giuliani. He helped the FBI, the Department of Justice. He helped create honeypots. And he understands criminals. He understands how they work, how to trap them, and how to bring them to justice. Trump, the Patriots, they've been planning this for a very long time. And he understands that he will need to set up every single one of them. He needs them to take the bait. He needs them to think that there is absolutely nothing wrong. He needs to think, he needs them to think that he's crazy. He has nothing on them. He needs them all to think that they have the upper hand. Isn't this how you set up a sting operation? You make it seem like they got away with it, that they have the upper hand, that nobody can touch them. Nothing can happen. Well, we're already starting to see everything start to turn around. A lot of the things that Trump said, they're starting to come true. A lot of things that we read in the Post are starting to come true. And yes, there are sleepers, which I do believe will be activated at the right moment. Just like they had sleepers waiting to be activated while Trump was president. Remember what Trump has done here. He has taken everything that they have done to him, where there was a special counsel while he was president. Well, he had Mueller. Biden has Durham. They accused Trump of cheating with a foreign government to win the elections. Trump is accusing them of cheating with foreign governments to get elected. Who has the proof? Who has all the evidence? Trump does. They brought Trump up on impeachment charges for quid pro quo. Biden actually did quid pro quo with Ukraine. Trump is now turning this all around. We had Obama who was shadowing Trump. Trump is now shadowing Biden, Obama who's sitting in the basement and the deep state. Everything is starting to turn around now. And everything that Trump wanted to accomplish, and we need to understand his mindset here, He wants to do it in a natural way. He wants them to pull the trigger. He wants laws created in the proper way. And yes, he knew about the election fraud. Yes, he knew how they were cheating. He had all that information. He could have stopped it. He didn't want to. He wanted the people to see. He wanted the people to experience it. Remember, this is not a four-year election. This is not just about arresting a couple of people. This is about bringing down the entire criminal syndicate. Bringing it down. Yes, will the deep state fight back? Yes, they will. And we'll be talking about that in just a moment. But Trump, he has the upper hand. And he needed certain things to play out. He needed to clear the board. Remember, everything that he's doing right now is working in his favor. Yes, he tried to bring the election cases to each court, up to the Supreme Court, and they rejected it. I think he already knew that they were going to do this. But Sidney Powell, she was out there, and she went ahead and she explained what was happening with SCOTUS. And this is what she said. My comment for the press on SCOTUS ruling today, the Supreme Court's failure to date 
to address the massive election fraud and multiple constitutional violations that wrought a coup of the presidency of the greatest country in world history completes the implosion of each of our three branches of government into the rubble of a sinkhole of corruption. It is an absolute tragedy for the rule of law, the future of what was a republic and all freedom-loving people around the world. Yes, people are seeing this. People understand it. But look what's happening during this period of time. We're seeing the legislatures do what they're supposed to be doing. That is creating laws. They're changing the election laws. Look what Georgia just did. Their bill that restricts ballot drop boxes, requires an ID for absentee voting, and limits weekend early voting days has passed the Georgia House. House Bill 531 passed 97 to 72, straight down party lines. The bill will do a number of things like reduce the number of early voting days, require an ID to apply for absentee ballot, and would make it a misdemeanor to give voters food or drink in the voting line if they're within 150 feet of the polling place. And we're starting to see this in the swing states. Very interesting. Do you think this was part of Trump's plan? Absolutely. What better way to bring in the laws than after the election? Remember, Q has told us, 2020 plus the elections will be safe. Do you see it happening? Remember, Trump, the Patriots, their plan is to show people an accelerated plan of the deep state, to show them what they always planned on. Now, over time, it was very difficult to see because they did it very slowly, very methodically. You couldn't really tell what they were doing. The news never really reported on it. But with Trump reversing everything that they were trying to do during his four years, they had to quickly move forward with their plan. Now, people are really noticing what they're doing here. And what we come to find out is that, yes, Biden, he's allowing the illegals to come over the border. Children are now coming up to the border. Trump already knew that this was going to happen. Remember, everything that Trump talked about at CPAC, he knew that this was going to happen. He knew the green energy was not going to work. He knew that there was going to be a border crisis. This is why he was at the Alamo talking about the wall. Hope they don't take down the wall. Well, Biden is not finishing the wall. He's not plugging the holes. He's allowing people to come up. Yes, this is going to be a major problem. But what we come to find out at the border is that the United Nations, they're helping bring in migrants over the border. And it was filmed. So people are seeing all of this and people are saying, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? We don't want people entering our country. We don't know if they're criminals. We don't know if they deal in human trafficking. We don't know if they're MS-13 gangs. We don't know anything about these people. And you're just bringing them into this country. And remember, the majority of Americans, there are polls taking. They want the wall. They want secure borders. They don't want illegals taking their jobs that have never been vetted, that didn't go through the point of entry. Actually, what Biden, his administration are doing, they're doing everything the opposite of what people want. And people are saying no more. Why do you think Trump won in a landslide? Why do you think millions of people come to see him or watch him when he was doing a speech at CPAC. Why is he still so popular? Because he has the people behind him. Everything that we're experiencing now, everything that we talked about during Trump's presidency is now coming true now. The future is proving the past. Now, what's very interesting is the Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, said that the Illegals, they're sending their children to the United States because they're loving parents. Because loving parents send their kids across Mexico to the U.S. border. I don't know, do loving parents actually do that? Yes, if their lives are in danger. If their lives are in danger, they will send them to the point of entry. But in most of these countries, their lives are not in danger. They're just getting the message that, oh, we can enter now? And they're sending their children up across all different countries. There's human traffickers, predators, you name it. So you can see that these individuals, they're trying to make the case of why this is normal. But people are seeing this and saying it is not. Now, what's very interesting is we're starting to see a lot of arrests with child sex trafficking in uh, West Alabama. 
There was a human trafficking task force which arrested 20 people in an undercover prostitution sting in Tuscaloosa. And then we have another operation called Broken Hearts. And 37 child sex predators were arrested in an undercover human trafficking sting. And we're starting to see a lot of arrests that have to do with child sex predators. Remember, what's going to unite a country? Well, you don't hurt the children. And we're starting to see this pick up now. Very interesting, the timing of all of this. And then we had Biden. He went ahead and he removed Dr. Seuss from the Read Across America Day due to concerns about racial undertones in the children's books. Now, what's very interesting is that it started off with censoring people that said something they didn't like. And we saw many, many people censored on Twitter, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Even the president was censored. If you even mention election fraud on YouTube or Facebook or anything else, they just down your account. And then we saw Amazon and other companies say, you know something? We're going to ban any book that has to do with hate speech. Now, of course, who determines what is hate? Because one group might not think it's hate, where another group says, yes, that's hateful. This is why the Founding Fathers never included hate speech in the First Amendment. That's why they said freedom of speech. If people don't like it, guess what you do? You don't buy the book. But you have the right to say it, even if it's hateful, even if you don't like it. You have the right to put this out there. But what is the left trying to do? What is the deep state trying to do? They're trying to control what people can read, what people can see. And we said, hey, they're going to start off on social media platforms. They're going to be moving to books. And here we are with Biden going after books. Let the people decide if they want that book or not. Actually, with a president telling you what book you can have or don't have, doesn't that sound like a dictator? It started to seem that way. And they banned, I think it was like six books written by Dr. Seuss, including If I Ran the Zoo and others. Because they believe there's racist, insensitive imagery. Now, if people don't like the book, they don't have to buy it. But I don't think the president should be telling the public what to read and what not to read. Actually, that should be left up to local communities and parents. But this is just the beginning. And a lot of people like to brush this off and say, well, you know, maybe it does and we'll just let that go. This is how they start with censorship. And it builds and it builds and it builds until it's too late. Until people say, wow, I didn't see this coming. Well, we all saw this coming. We also see that the people... They don't agree with cancel culture. Actually, there was a Harvard Camps Harris poll that was released, and it says that most of the people, 64%, said that the cultural boycotts posed a threat to freedom in the U.S. 36% disagreed. So the majority of the people are saying, this is not right. This shouldn't be happening. Actually, Representative Jim Jordan, he's calling on Nadler to hold House Judiciary hearings on dangerous trend of cancel culture. I wonder how that's going to go. I think the only way we're going to push forward with this is to get rid of all of these individuals, the corrupt politicians that are following certain agendas. Now, what's very interesting, and we've said this before, we know that as soon as Biden came into office, we had the WHO. They recalibrated the tests. They didn't go out to 40 cycles because they said there was a lot of false positives. Well, they knew this from a very long time ago. They set the tests up this way to statistically make it look like there was a pandemic. So they changed the test and we saw the cases started to drop. The death rate started to drop. And of course, yes, there was still fear mongering. Yes, Biden's still trying to figure out where the vaccines are. But now we're starting to see governors, they're reversing everything. We have Governor Abbott of Texas. He's ending the statewide mass mandate in Texas and announces all businesses in the state can reopen. Then we have another governor, Governor Reeves. He is lifting all mass mandates in Mississippi, and businesses can begin to operate at full capacity without any state-imposed restrictions. It has begun. Remember what Trump said? That the virus will just mysteriously disappear in April. Now, the mainstream media, they thought he was talking about April of 2020. 
Of course, he didn't give a year. He just said April. They assumed it was that April. And here we are approaching April. And look what's happening. Cases are disappearing. The death rate is dropping. The states that were locked down are opening up. Now we have states removing the mass mandate, opening up all businesses to 100%. The pandemic is about to disappear. This is just the beginning. We're going to see a lot more governors join in. We knew this was going to happen. And then we have the New York state lawmakers. They're passing legislation to repeal Governor Cuomo's emergency powers. Cuomo will no longer have free reign to order measures like quarantines and mass mandates. That will be stripped away from him. Why? Because of everything that he's going through. Yes, I know the sexual cases, the sexual harassment cases are front and center, but the real case is all the people that he killed. All the people that Whitmer killed. Murphy, Newsom, and the rest. That's the real crime. And yes, I do believe they'll be brought up on charges. We're starting to see everything fall apart for him. And we're already starting to see it fall apart for Whitmere. Things are coming out of the woodwork here. We'll be talking about that in just a second. But remember how this all started with COVID. The medical profession, what did they do? They really bought into COVID because of the simple fact that they got paid bonuses if the person had COVID. They were claiming that COVID was impacting minorities more, but failed to mention that if you did not have insurance and said you had COVID, the government paid 100% of all medical expenses. They bribed the medical professionals to turn COVID into a national crisis. This was throughout the hospitals everywhere. And anyone that objected to this, anyone that spoke out about this, they would shut them down. And look what they did. They destroyed people's lives. They destroyed businesses. They got paid. They lied. But the rest of the country, they suffered. Actually, the world suffered because of what they've done here. Suicides, they were up by 60%. All of this because they got paid to lie. Look what the deep state did. And now people are starting to figure this out. People are starting to see the truth. And yes, this is part of the plan. Trump knew that this was going to go away. I say by May, June, most of this is going to be a thing of the past. Actually, the New York Times already projected this out there. Remember the article that we read? That when this is all said and done, COVID will be like a bad cold. Remember, it was a hoax. It was a statistical hoax that they created. Am I saying there's no virus? Yes, there's a virus. Is it what they said it was? No, they lied. And now people are going to see the lie. Now, what's very interesting is that Cuomo, he is in hot water. We can already see that they're stripping away his emergency powers, and it's getting worse and worse for him. There's videos that are coming out now, and he has nothing to hide, about, hide behind right now. And actually, they were asking questions to Jen Psaki, and she won't directly say where Biden's red line is on sexual misconduct claims. You know why? Because he has his own problems. And if he has a red line, he already crossed it. So he, they're trying to stay away from all this. But it seems there are calls out now saying that Cuomo must resign. And it has already begun with him. Actually, we're going to see a lot more people resigning. And then we have Whitmer. Well, it seems that something shady was going on in Michigan involving its Democratic governor, Gretchen Whitmer, and the exiting state health department director, Robert Gordon, who received hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer dollars for a reason the public hasn't been made aware of yet. Now, the Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer, let's talk about your health. The keto diet is one of the quickest ways to achieve a younger looking appearance and burn fat. The diet has been shown time and time again in studies to flatten stomachs, burn belly fat, and give unparalleled anti-aging benefits. The problem, however, is that following a strict keto diet is difficult, if not impossible, for the average person. Eating just one bite of the wrong type of food or supplement can reverse the effects of all the hard work you put in that day. That's why I highly recommend my favorite keto power. There's a 60-day money-back guarantee. Get keto with X22 for 51% off now by going to ketowithx22.com. That is ketowithx22.com. Her administration agreed to pay former state health department director Robert Gordon $155,000 in a separation deal that also required the two sides to maintain confidentiality. 
about the circumstances that led to his abrupt departure. Was he going to turn them in? Was he going to say something about what was really going on here? Maybe, but I believe this is just the beginning of what's going to be come out, coming out, just like with Cuomo. This is going to spread to every single other governor. Nothing can stop this. Nothing. They're all going down. Now, today, we had Christopher Ray. He is the FBI director. He was testifying before the U.S. Senate, and he was talking about the Proud Boys, Antifa, QAnon, uh, domestic terrorists. Now, we need to put this into perspective right now. If you really listen to what Ray said, he said absolutely nothing. He said there is no evidence of left-wing groups or Antifa. Antifa is not a domestic terrorist group. The Proud Boys, they are not a domestic terrorist group. QAnon is not a domestic terrorist group. Remember, there is no QAnon, it's Q. And then there's Anons, there's not QAnon. But this is what the mainstream media likes to do. They also said that there were no fake Trump supporters present at the U.S. Capitol. Now, we know that's completely fake, phony, and false. We know that John Sullivan, he dressed up as a Trump supporter. We know there there was Antifa. We know that they planned this entire thing. But why is he neutral? He didn't point the finger at Q. He didn't point the finger at the Proud Boys. He didn't do any of that. He stayed down the center. Why? But he did say one thing that was very, very important that the capital siege was domestic terrorism. He said, it's got no place in our democracy and tolerating it would make a mockery of our nation's rule of law. Now let's think about this for a second. He didn't point the finger at any group. He really didn't say anything about who was doing what. He stayed neutral. That's very interesting. But he did say, Domestic terrorism, well, that's, that has no place. And he said this on purpose. Let's go back to post-1862. It says, and by the way, this is from uh, August 13, 2018. It says, who controls the fake news? Why is Antifa allowed to incite violence, wear masks, make threats, use, carry weapons, and physically harm others who oppose their ideology? Why does Antifa attempt to justify such violence by labeling the challenger as alt-right or Nazi? Why doesn't the left condone such acts of violence and call for an immediate end? Define projection. Define insurance policy. Define warning against attempts to unveil. What does Ray know, and when will he release this to the public? Well, is he releasing it just yet? No. He's staying neutral. Does the violence extremism justify National Guard deployment in the future ahead of a planned public release? Yes, it does. Let's go to post 4925. Now, this was a picture, and there's many different pictures. There's one of Ray where there's no X through him. Then there's a picture of Ray with an X through him. Now, an Anon on the board made this X. Q just reposted it. So that's very interesting. So Ray also outlined the following. He said there were three buckets. The largest group was peaceful, rowdy protesters. Second group swept up in the moment, trespassed on Capitol campus, but did not enter the building. The third group, smallest but most impactful, allegedly coordinated travel gear meeting up. Now, he didn't point the finger at who these individuals were. He was letting everyone know what happened. Let's go back to post 4,706. Insurgency can be defined as the organized use of subversion and violence to seize, nullify, or challenge political control of a region. Domestic terrorism. So he was letting everyone know that this was domestic terrorism, not pointing the finger to any specific group. There was a group, though, that was calling the shots. Then we have post 4393. And this says, why is Antifa allowed to operate? What happens if Soros-funded operations get violent and engage in domestic terrorism? What happens if mayors, police commissioners, chiefs do not enforce the law? Well, we've seen all of this, haven't we? Now, again, Ray did not point the finger at anyone. And then we moved to post 3537. And Anon said, Ray is a sleeper. Q said, 
future marker. Why didn't Ray do anything at this moment? Was it time? Maybe not. Is he a sleeper? Is he a sleeper for the good guys, the white hats, or is he a sleeper for the black hats? Well, if he was a sleeper for the black hats, wouldn't you think that he would say the Proud Boys, Q, and everyone else, they're all domestic terrorists? I do believe so. Why didn't he say that Antifa was? I think they're going to be using him later on. He did make a point to say that domestic terrorism has no place in the U.S. Do you think this is going to come out later? Yes, if you know the strategy of Trump, if you know what he does, he sets everything up for later on. Think about when information comes out about treason, sedition, crimes against humanity, and then election fraud. What do you think the deep state's going to do? Do you think the deep state is just going to say, hey, well, what are you going to do? We got caught. No. They're going to push their agenda. What is their agenda? Their agenda is riots. Remember, they thought this was coming during the election. They thought Trump was going to make his move then. He didn't. Why do you think they have the fences up? Why do you think they have the National Guard there? They were preparing for all of this. I think this is all in preparation for later. Everything that we were told about is happening now. Now, what's very interesting is that we know the Senate was talking about January 6th because the people are very concerned about January 6th. No, well, that's not really true because the latest Harvard-Harris poll found that Americans are more concerned over the violence that happened last summer in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd than the Capitol riot on January 6th. 55% violence in the cities, 45% January 6th riot. So we know that the deep state, they're pushing their agenda to make it seem like America is very, very concerned about this. No, America was always concerned about Antifa, the summer of love, the fires, the looting that they witnessed on social media. Remember, the mainstream media hid this from the people until they couldn't hide it any longer. Now, what's very interesting is if we go back to January 6th, Trump requested 10,000 guard troops. Now, that 